Good afternoon, Milwaukee, and welcome to another segment of Listen MKE, a partnership between the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, WUWM 89.7 FM, Milwaukee's NPR, Milwaukee Public Libraries, and Milwaukee PBS. Um, today, we're going to be talking all things voting for the next 45 minutes. Uh, we'll be covering absentee ballots, early in-person voting, and polling places and more. I'm joined by my co-host, uh, Taryn Powell, uh, our race and ethnicity reporter with WDWM Radio, and uh, two guests who are both leaders in two very important areas, uh, even more so during the election season. Um, one of our guests is Joan Johnson, director of Milwaukee Public Libraries, and congratulations to your recent confirmation. And then our other guest is Claire Woodall-Bog, the executive director of Milwaukee Election Commission. So um, let's just jump right in. The, this this is um, a question for Claire. Uh, the, the last, and it's actually um, going to ask about the last election, which was particularly challenging. A lot of people had questions, complaints. What happened there, and what can they expect this time around from the election commission? Yeah, so I'm assuming you're talking about the last big election, which you saw yeah. was April yeah. 7th. April 7th. Um, and I'm happy to tell voters they will never see anything like April 7th again, at least if the Milwaukee Election Commission has anything to do with it. The biggest difference is that we've had time. We've had time to recruit new poll workers who are not as high of risk for COVID-19. We've also had time to implement all the proper safety protocols with our health department and time to make sure that we can open over 170 polling places on election day. Um, so you should be expecting to vote at your normal polling place. We've only had a handful of changes and you can always double check that information at our website, which is milwaukee.gov slash election. Um, and since April, we've also seen a huge continuing increase of absentee voting. Um, so we don't expect a huge amount of congestion on election day because um, over a third of our registered voters have already requested their mail-in ballot. Um, so we are hopeful that voters will find a very different experience on November 3rd. April 7th was really a catastrophe of events that never should have occurred. We were really disappointed that our state legislature and state court systems and then the US Supreme Court all held um, that we had to have that in-person election right as COVID-19 was really um, surging, especially in the city of Milwaukee, but we have had plenty of time to prepare to conduct an election in a pandemic now. And then just so far, everything's gone smoothly this time. Everyone's been sent their ballots out on time. How, is, how are things going so far? Yeah, so far, everything is going really well. A third of our registered voters, over 112,000 ballots have been mailed out to people's homes. And we are seeing uh, over a third of those voters have already returned their ballots. We have drop boxes across the city, so you don't have to put your ballot back in the mail. If you're here locally, you can take it to any Milwaukee Public Library to drop it off. Um, and then since April, we really had a visual of what a poll worker shortage looks like. So the most important thing in order to have neighborhood-based voting is to have enough election workers at those polling places. And since April, we have recruited and trained over 2,500 new poll workers, and we have over a thousand returning veteran poll workers who, now that we have all the proper safety protocols in place and have provided training and all the necessary PPE, feel more comfortable working on election day. Gotcha, thanks for that. And then Taryn? Um, speaking of the drop boxes at libraries, um, Joan, this is the first time the library has been immersed in an election like this. When and why did the library decide to work with the Election Commission? Uh, we've been actually working with the Election Commission for several years. Uh, we've actually historically had library staff who were deputized to uh, serve as registrars. Um, inside our libraries um, um, decades ago, actually at least 20 years ago, before that, before it was possible to do registrations online. Um, so we actually had library staff who were deputized to actually um, help um, people with um, applications um, to register to vote. And then those would be sent to the election commission to be um, processed. So um, we've had an ongoing partnership with the Election Commission for many, many years. Um, 
once it was possible to do registrations online, um, people, we helped get the information out to people to, to, to inform them that they could do this work online. And then um, we have also um, designated like computers at libraries to um, for people to use to actually register online. So, so the library has long been a, a, a partner of the election commission uh, and it's uh, long been a place where people can come and, um, and get registered to vote. Um, Libraries have supported elections and voting rights for decades. So how might things outside of, you know, helping folks register, um, how else is the library um, helping in the election? We are also um, polling sites. So we, for years, um, have had um, about three quarters of our um, locations serving as polling sites. Um, we also have a smaller fraction of those that serve as um, in, um, in person early voting sites. And uh, now um, we have the drop boxes, which are great for people who are dropping off absentee ballots. And then, of course, um, we just um, have the computer, computer stations that anyone can use. Um, so you don't have to just use the one kiosk that we have for. Uh, registration, but you can use really any of the library's computers um, to go to the website to register to vote. So those are all the different ways now that the library is supporting. Okay, tell us. Yeah, so this is um, this is another question for our, our election commission uh, guest here. And it's about what people should know about misinformation, verifying legitimate voter materials, um, addressing any potential voter suppression tactics. Like how are you preparing for that? And what should people know? Where can they go for this information? Yeah, so I always encourage voters, if they ever have anything suspicious, um, if they ever have concerns, to reach out and contact us. And you can do that by emailing us, by calling us, or you can also follow us on Facebook, where we are really trying to increase the information that we're sharing about all of the different safety and security measures around voting. Um, right now, that's one of the biggest threats to election is, is the amount of misinformation um, in fact, we received a memo from intelligence officers recently that I shared on our Facebook page about the threat of foreign inter influencers um, posing misinformation on Facebook the night of the election as it re relates to election results. So you want to make sure you're always getting your election information, whether it's about results, um, how to apply for an absentee ballot, how ballots are counted, make sure it's coming from a government, you know, an election official. Um, and don't believe everything you read on Facebook, that is for certain. But we're doing our best to really get out the word. Today we launched our votes count in the 414 campaign. And our campaign is really to emphasize to Milwaukee voters that we are in a swing state and their vote matters and will be heard more than ever but also that we want them to know that their votes will count. We're taking all of the safety and security measures to ensure that all votes are counted and accounted for in the city of Milwaukee. Thank you for that and some some good general advice that you can't believe everything you read. <laughs> um, but, people listen. Yeah, right. and, and to that, um, I kind of had a spe more specific question regarding that, which is there's been some political rhetoric about whether or not certain types of ballots are valid. Can you just kind of explain what are absentee ballots, what is mail-in voting, and what are their role in, in elections? Yeah, so every voter in Wisconsin should know they have a right to an absentee ballot in our state. We're a no-excuse absentee voting state, which means you don't have to have an excuse to request an absentee ballot. Um, voting by mail is very safe. In fact, it's the safest way to vote in the midst of a pandemic. Um, and so voters should really consider their safety and what concerns they have. Um, and it's also a way to really make sure that you're planning ahead. So if you go ahead and plan ahead, you could request your ballot. Once you get your ballot, there's no reason to delay in sending it back to us. Um, that's one of the reasons we established the drop boxes. Our staff pick them up daily. Um, following very careful chain of custody procedures, transported them back to our secure warehouse in locked bags. 
and then your ballot is safely secured until election day under 24 hour video surveillance. Um, so voting by mail has in fact never been safer, never been more legitimate in my opinion. Um, and really you have a right to vote by mail if you wish to do so, despite what the national rhetoric may be. Um, every Wisconsin voter has the right to choose what's the best method to vote for them. Gotcha, thank you for that. Tara? Hi, I just wanted to uh, remind our listeners that you guys are watching a segment of Listen MKE, a partnership between the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, WUWM 89.7 FM, Milwaukee's NPR, Milwaukee Public Libraries, and Milwaukee PBS. Um, back to you, Joan. Um, as we've kind of just uh, talked about up to this point, of course, this is another election taking place in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. People are concerned about you know, what it's going to look like if they decide to go vote in person. Um, so if they decide to go to their nearest library, like what safety protocols will be in place? What is it going to look like? Um, how many voters will you allow in a space at a time? Um, well, uh, first of all, I, I want to make sure that, um, and we can turn this back over to Claire after I'm done, that people go to the designated um, precinct where they should be voting. Um, just um, realizing that if you're going to vote in person, you have a specific place where you need to go. Um, but once you, once you once they arrive, if one of our libraries happens to be um, um, the voting um, place for um, anyone in particular, we have safety protocols in place right now because of just being open to the public. So. Um, so the first is that we are only operating at 25% capacity right now um, um, be, uh, because of the distancing rules that everyone should be following right now. Um, people should be at least six feet of, apart if they're not in the same bubble. Um, and everyone is wearing masks. Um, if, um, if you are not wearing a mask, um, you are not allowed um, inside the library. Um, so that is, um, that's critical. Um, if there are persons who um, are approaching, who for some medical reason are saying that they are not able to wear a mask, they are, they, what we are doing, trying to do is help them by letting them stay outside. And then, um, you know, we can serve as, um, as a runner for them to get what they need from inside the library and bring it outside to them. Um, but if they're if they're hoping to vote in person, they're going to need to be able to wear a, a mask if, they're, if they wanna come inside. Um, I will actually ask Claire if there's something special that, um, that the uh, poll workers are doing to help people who are insisting that for some reason they cannot put on a mask, but they wanna exercise their right to vote in person. Um, so I'll have to defer to Claire on that part, but um, but just but in general, anyone who's using libraries must be wearing a mask in order to be inside the library, and we are observing a 25% capacity rule. And um, I do also want to ask. Um, there's been some, you know, political rhetoric encouraging, you know, regular citizens to kind of take on a role as like election observers. Is the library thinking about that? And you know, how are you guys prepared to deal with that if that's something that comes up? Uh, again, I def I would need to defer to Claire on how election of, of how election okay. observers are um, how we how we work with them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So election um, in Wisconsin, you don't have to apply to be an election observer. Um, you can observe the polls or the central count processing, but you do need to plan to bring your ID as part of the observer check-in process and check in with the chief inspector. Um, it's important to know though, that due to the pandemic, we will be having to restrict the number of observers allowed in at a time, depending upon the size of the polling place. Uh, we are taking social distancing very seriously. And as Joan said, everyone will be expected to wear a mask um, for voting if someone it has a medical condition that would prevent them from wearing a mask. We, of course, will honor that. But anyone else who just flat out does not wear a mask will be asked to vote in the designated area at the entrance of the polling place. Um, 
And so we welcome observers and we will do our best to accommodate them, but we will have to limit the number of, of observers due to the pandemic at each polling place. Thomas, I'll throw back to you. Yeah, so um, recently there was a decision to close to, or to not have uh, two polling locations. Um, I know the Friday Forum was one, I believe the Bruce Stadium was the other. Can you explain what happened, what, was, what the decision making process was behind that? Yeah, so it was a very tough decision. We added those two sites on September 1st due to the ongoing pandemic and our need to try to alleviate congestion um, at the polls on election day. And one of the ways to do that is by increasing early voting opportunities. And we were really excited when both of those sites were offered to us. Fiserv could have served as a very large open air space with state of the art uh, circulation in those facilities. Um, and then with the brewers, we had planned to conduct drive-through voting, just like we did this spring, so that voters had a safe option that they might feel more comfortable. Um, but unfortunately, due to court decisions um, and guidance issued by the Wisconsin Election Commission, we decided to close those sites. We would never want to take any action that would possibly put a voter's ballot at risk. Um, and due to a recent court decision where a um, judge denied the plaintiff's request to extend the deadline for us to designate sites, um, and then the WEC reaffirming that on Monday, it was a very tough call to make. Um, but my nightmare scenario would be that someone would go to vote at one of those sites and later have their ballot thrown out due to it being added after the deadline. And just for some background information, the deadline for us to approve our early voting sites for the November 3rd election was June 11th, um, which is a very long and far in advance deadline, but especially when you add in a pandemic. Um, we didn't know the capacity limits for all of our voting sites at that time. We didn't know what the pandemic would look like in October, as soon as June. Um, and so it's really disappointing, but we are still lucky to have 13 early voting sites, many of which are libraries, and voters can go to our website to check the schedule and the hours of those sites. They all open on October 20th. Excellent. And then for the story that I wrote, you walked me through this process, which is fascinating, of what happens to a ballot after it's dropped off in that in that ballot box, essentially. So can you walk everyone through what happens to a ballot? Sure. So once you, let's say you're dropping it off at a drop box, we have staff that work in teams. No one is ever picking up ballots alone. There's always at least two people who pick up the ballots daily. They um, log in serial numbers, the number of ballots they're picking up, and then they put them in a locked bag and then they transport them back to our warehouse. Once they make their way to our warehouse, every ballot is sorted into one of 325 different voting wards and then we alphabetize the ballots by last name within those wards. Um, we are not able to do anything else prior to election day. Uh, we're not able to open the ballots or assign voter numbers. Um, we're not able to start processing until 7 a.m. on election day. On election day, every ballot is reviewed by two election inspectors to make sure it had its valid signatures which is a voter signature, a witness signature, and then a witness address. We do send those back to voters as we come across them and communicate if they need to correct their ballot. Um, but our election inspectors give it a double check on election day. Then your ballot is opened. Um, every envelope gets a voter number and then the voter number is recorded on the absentee log, just like it would be done at, in the poll book at your polling place on election day. Then we remove all of the ballots, they get flattened, which sounds very silly, but getting the ballots as flat as possible is actually very important. And then they're run through our high-speed tabulators um, by ward. And then as we receive ballots on election day, they go through that exact same process, except it happens all in real time on election day. Gotcha. Thank you. That's, that was so interesting the first time you told us, especially the flattening part. <laughs> like that's that makes sense when you explain the, the tabulator and everything. I'm gonna uh, throw it back to you, Terry. 
Claire and Joan, this question is for both of you. Um, what are you most excited and most concerned about as election day approaches? Uh, Joan, you can take that first. Well, um, I'm, I'm gonna be really excited to actually just have the day come and go. <laughs> so, you know, so that I we- I think we all are. Right, right, right. Um, but um, but I, I am actually really happy and excited to announce that um, with um, the approval of the mayor and our board for the first time ever, the, um, the branch libraries will be closed to the public, which means that our staff who are so inclined will be freed up to serve as poll workers all day long on November 3rd. We are very excited about that. This is a first time ever. Um, the central library will, will be open so that will, there will be one library open that day. It will be the central library branch. So if somebody needs to be using resources in person, they can do so at the central library on November 3rd. Um, so many of our libraries are serving as polling places and we're expecting quite a crunch of people to be coming through. So um, we really felt it would be best to um, have um, the libraries basically serving one purpose that day and that is to support voting. Um, Central Library, it's a little bit si different situation because the polling site is in the Centennial Hall part of the Central Library complex as a whole. So that's the, the entrance is on a different side of the uh, side of the block. It's a different street where you enter. Um, there shouldn't be too much crossover between voters and library users. So Central Library remains open on November 3rd. All right, and Claire, how about you? What are you excited and or concerned about um, as election day approaches? Yeah, so I share Joan's sentiment. I'm excited for it all to be over. Um, but I'm also excited because I'm excited for it to be over and to be able to look back and say that this was by far the toughest year in the election commission's history um, and that we are a very tiny staff. Um, for most of the year, we were only eight people. We just added a ninth staff member, um, but that we pulled off this election successfully um, in the midst of a pandemic and really adapted well. Uh, what I'm worried about is, as always, we have changing election laws in Wisconsin, and right now there's a court case that could affect the voting deadlines, the deadline to mail back your absentee ballot, and I'm just constantly worried and preparing um, for last-minute changes to election law that could confuse voters and trying to make a plan so that voters really know what the law is and what their role um, and what to do to make sure to have their ballot counted. Mm -hmm. I agree. Definitely need to be aware of any and all kinds of changes and deadlines, everything. Thank you both. Tell us. Speaking of deadlines, can you go through, Claire, the dates and deadlines, um, early in-person voting when that ends, um, last day to turn in, last hour to turn in your absentee ballot, all that stuff? Yeah, so right now the most pressing, the upcoming deadline um, is voter registration by mail or online. Right now, it's October 21st. It was extended by a week um, under a court ruling. The first day of early voting is October 20th. Early voting runs until the Sunday before the election, unless you need to register to vote. And then Friday, October 30th is your deadline. October 29th is the legal deadline to request a by mail ballot but it doesn't realistically give a voter enough time to be assured that they will have time to receive their ballot and return it by election day. So we recommend that you apply at least a week in advance um, so that you have time to receive the ballot and then to either put it back in the mail or to use a drop box. And then the, the most important day um, is November 3rd election day. It's really important for voters to know it's never too late to register and vote in Wisconsin. You can register and vote on election day. You would just need to bring proof of address if your ID doesn't have its current address on there. Um, and you can, you know, it's never too late to change your mind. If you're skeptical and you're not sure, just know that you can change your mind all the way until 8 p.m. on election night. And then the deadline to return your absentee ballot right now under the current court ruling is also election day. So right now that's a postmark deadline. It has to be 
postmarked by election day, or if you're using a Dropbox, it has to be physically in that Dropbox by eight o'clock on election night. Um, and then we have until November 9th for us to receive that postmarked ballot. Gotcha. And then how do uh, people check uh, to make sure or track their ballot um, after they've dropped it off? Yep. So you can track your ballot after you've dropped it off or mailed it on myvote.wi.gov in order to make sure that we've received it um, and it's queued up to be counted on election day. Excellent. And then I have uh, one more question, which uh, I don't know if you can answer this question, but I think it's one everyone wants to know. Which is how, when will we know what the outcome of the state will be, or if not the state, um, the ward that, that, or the wards that Milwaukee is under? So voters should know that because the state legislature has not made any changes to election laws um, that would increase our ability to process the thousand percent increase of absentee ballots that we've received this year, we can't start counting those ballots until 7 a.m. on election day. Because of that, we are not expecting to have results from our absentee ballots until the wee hours of the early morning on November 4th. Um, so when you see that there are 100% of voting precincts reported on election night, know that that's just from the polling place. We use a centralized uh, location called Central Count to process absentee ballots, and those results come in all at once. We are expecting to have between 150 and 200,000 ballots passed via absentee. So there would not be a shock, or at least we hope that the public will not be shocked if they wake up November 4th to very different election results than they went to bed with. And again, this in every other state almost, um, except for another swing state is Pennsylvania, where their legislature does not allow them to start counting absentee ballots until election day. Um, but we really have our hands tied behind our back when you think about the effort it takes that I described to process between 150 and 200,000 ballots all in one place on election day in the midst of a pandemic. Gotcha, well, it's, unfortunately, I guess we're all gonna have to be a little patient. I know us journalists will be up until the wee hours of the night anyway, um, but uh, I wanna thank, um, thank everyone who joined us, my co-host, Taryn, um, our guest, Karen Marvel and Joan Johnson, as well as everyone who joined us. Uh, this live stream is part of Listen MKE, a partnership between the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, WUWM 89.7 FM, Milwaukee's NPR, the Milwaukee Public Libraries, and Milwaukee PBS. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye. Thanks.